This is La Casa de la Matthew. La Casa de la Matthew. Hopefully Matthew doesn't have any dogs. What is this? Okay. Yeah. Looks like they're gonna put the dogs away first. <laughs> Who needs indoor terrariums when you live in Peru? Hi, I'm Mathieu Chuteau uh, from Montreal, Quebec, and I've been living in Peru for the last five years, uh, managing a research center on the warning color patterns of butterflies and poison dart frogs. What is this place and what are you, uh, what do you do here? Um, so me, I'm a, I'm a scientist for the CNRS, which is the French research uh, organism. Mm -hmm. And we're working on warning coloration, so the vivid coloration of uh, here the for dart frogs, but also the butterfly. We have a lot of cages down there uh, where we study Heliconius and Ecomins butterfly. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we have all this cage set up for breeding purpose and we're doing mapping crosses of distinct species of uh, poison dart frog from Peru to being able to identify the genes and the alleles uh, underlying the different variation color pattern of these frogs. So the richness, the genetic richness which gives all the color variation in these crazy frogs. And what's the main purpose for uh, your research here? So the main purpose, me, I have, I have really a basic, uh, uh, I want to be able to understand which genes are implicated. So it's a really, uh, there's no, it's, it's, it's to understand how evolution works, why there's so much diversity in the tropics compared to other parts of the world. But also um, a big consequence of this research is for, uh, to be able to, uh, it's, it's to be able to, to, to manage better any conservation measure where, uh, in, we're, we're, we're trying to make here in Peru. If we want to make a difference, we must be able to understand the organism uh, with which we work to be able to uh, implement a um, really realistic and efficient measure of conservation and identifying the genes, which is the, the richness of these frogs and the, on which local adaptation is working, is an important feature of the, this organism. Uh, you mentioned conservation. Um, here in Peru, is that uh, a major issue with why you're doing the research? Uh, conservation is really... Uh, so in Peru, we have a lot of problem with conservation, and mostly in the department of San Martin, mm -hmm. and a bit more in Loreto also. Uh, these are the most deforested habitat uh, of all Peru, I would say. And so we have a big problem, and we know little of the diversity we're, just, we're losing each time. Um, we know, at least for with butterflies and frogs, this enormous di this, this, this diversity is completely enormous. Way more than in, in, in Colombia or Ecuador. We yeah, can have a 100 kilometers by 100 kilometers land piece of uh, region. And we have maybe 12 distinct morph of Fantasticus, four, dis four up to 12 distinct morph of one species of butterfly. So that's cra it's completely crazy. It's Why like, is that? That's what we, we try to understand. We don't know if it's a climate, but it seems also that this Cordillera creates a lot of uh, microhabitat that uh, are, can generate this diversity because each microhabitat will have a distinct variation in climate and in this case also there's the mimicry ring so the community with which other frogs or which other butterflies are living in with which goes and can put a convergence of color pattern that we've seen. With the are the plants different in this caldera? Uh, yeah, yeah, clearly. In the, in, the, in, the, in the region. In the region. Yeah, exactly. From each strait of forest is a different so, diversity so of plants. So the plant. plants are different and then the bugs are different. And But and also the, the birds are different. The frogs and the birds will be different. So it's a, it's really a selection acting locally <coughs> and that can drive this kind so of crazy. So it starts with the plants. It starts, it starts with the plants and it starts start. with, the, with the weather. Uh -huh. All right. Matthew, uh, if you would, just, um, just a lot of people watching this video are going to be uh, dart frog uh, enthusiasts and hobbyists. And uh, if you would, could you just um, kind of give us an example and kind of show us uh, 
an example of some of the um, the results of your research so far? But the research, um, but so far there's not much result because we're still uh, rearing. So the result would be when the rearing would be finished, we'd have uh, some maybe with some luck a few thousand of hybrids okay. that we can use. But you can see that here we have, for instance, in these terrarium, you can I don't know if you can see on the on the back here. You can see these crosses, which are nominal Fantasticus, crossed with Summerside Fantasticus. And which is interesting is that the color pattern looks really much like the, the, the nominal, which seems to imply there's a dominance uh, of color pattern, which might prevent uh, some intermediate phenotype that would be under uh, highly selected by predators to appear in this case. But this is thing we must confirm. But yeah. you can see like they're full of these little frogs here. Like these. So this is a cross of a summer sigh with nominal fantasticus. The only difference I would see is they don't have these, um, they have a lack of uh, this white color that the nominal fantasticus have. But other than that, they're exactly uh, like a nominal fantasticus in any sense. Okay. So uh, there's a few frogs I caught myself uh, from like this fantasticus from the Jibero locality. Yeah. So that's a, uh, that's a... So that's one frog I, I was When I released, I had collected maybe 40 of these frogs. Okay. But this one, I, 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 I couldn't... It just... So I released the frogs, all the frogs. I went back to release all the frogs, and I, I missed one, which okay. has been living with me since then. Where's this guy right here? Uh, this is a hybrid of a Renitomea imitator from the island, so which spots, green spots. And uh, the lowland forms, which is yellow striped. Okay. And this is a basser, uh, basser, uh, Amerega kinerachi. We call it Amerega kinerachi. So here, the problem in this one is that they're really tiny babies. Okay. So not sure we'll be able to find one because this is one of the cage I used to release the baby. So here we have a baby. Oh. Woo. So this is a cross of our summer sigh with a reticulated Fantastica. Hmm. But they, they come out of the water extremely small, so they'll need a bit more time before they're photogenic. Okay. In this one we have some summer sigh stock. And they all Bardell darted. All disappeared. Yeah, they were down in here. They all disappeared. We put them. We opened the glass. Yeah, I saw them. As soon as you open the glass, they all disappear. <laughs> you see how you're weird. Looks like kind of mosquitoes. Okay. Wow. We got a shot to the summer's eyes, so we'll show in those. And these are some more of the, the hybrids from another, of another cross, another line, but they're also nominal with summer size. You want right on the zipper? Right here's the zipper. He's right on the zipper. Really? Yeah. Is he? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. What was that? That was the imitator? Uh, this was a variabilis. Okay. A variabilis cross with a venture maculata. Variabilis and venture maculata. Mm -hmm. But what we used to call ventrumaculata. Now they're also variabilis. Now everything's variabilis. It used to be ventrumaculata. And this is in your Fantastica back there. Yeah, exactly. It's the same cross. Another family, but the same cross. The same color pattern that we crossed. Uh, so I did cross them three times. So it's three distinct lines. Okay. Um, and in the hobby, it's always frowned upon to uh, obviously uh, cross our frogs to prevent, you know, um, to prevent, to keep them as pure as possible, but you do it here purely for research. It's purely for research. Um, all this frog will be, in the end, would be killed because it cannot be released back in the habitat. And what'd you do with the parents? Uh, the parents has been released in the habitat. Already released back into the habitat. Exactly. All right. Um, just for a few more minutes, if you would, just if you could just uh, go through and just kind of explain each, you know, in each tank what you have as far so, as. But the tank is mixed. Um, okay. all, in all the glass tanks that we have, that you can see, are mostly a pair. There's only two frogs, most of them. So here we have a cross of Fantasticus. So of two hybrid Fantasticus. So we want to know how characters or color pattern variation will establish in the progeny. So here is a cross of Fantasticus. We have here also a cross of um, 
variable is. So the island form, which is green with spots that you maybe have seen uh, in the elevation, uh, with the lowland form, which is which was called Ventrumaculata before. So we also work with Ventrumaculata, and we're a fantastic guy. And we have some tanks with all these babies here that we're rearing until the the color pattern are fixed. Because when they leave the water, the color pattern is not the same as when they'll be three or four months old age. Uh, the color pattern still uh, developed to the frogs. So all these are baby baby tanks. We have all these, uh, also other cross of Fantasticus we have here. So in every terrarium, it's a mix of, uh, some terrarium are purely for the parents, for the breeders, some other for the babies. And we have, we, we follow the distinct generation that we produce to be able to, um, to, to uh, track the genes to the family ge genealogy. I noticed you mentioned uh, uh, a lot of information about Ramonetta. What about uh, any other species, uh, Marig, or anything? Are you working with any other species other than those? No, right? I'm not working with other species. I would love to, but this is, um, it's, it, as you can see, it's a project that takes enormous room. So I have two sides of my house complete of tanks now. And uh, I would love to work with the other one, but yeah, cannot do everything at once, unfortunately. And we must consider that these rearing, I've been begin, I began doing them about three years ago. Mm -hmm. So now I believe it, within the next year and a half, we'll have all the cross and all the progeny we need. But this is a long-term project. Last and not, but not least, if you would, uh, do you have any advice to uh, the hobbies back in uh, AmeriCorps throughout the world that keep uh, dart frogs that you think might be beneficial? Uh, regarding the rearing of the frogs, uh, I don't have much, but I, I would, I would highly suggest um, people to come see the frogs in the habitat. They would at least have a good sense of what, what they, where they live, the temperature and the, the condition. And then sometimes we try to replicate within terrarium, but we're completely wrong. And when we come here, we realize it's pretty, pretty fast, in fact. So I would really suggest people to see this marvelous creature in nature. And that would be my best advice. And then they can, they can apply what they've seen to their own rearing, but they must see by themselves. All right, so when we were talking about the dart frogs, you also mentioned that you uh, study uh, butterflies here at the research center. If you would, just uh, can you give us a little bit more information about that? Um, so I arrived in Peru to study the butterflies. Uh, I was always interested in frogs, but butterflies are an easier system to study since they're more easy to find, mm -hmm. uh, more easy to raise, and uh, we can uh, easily monitor uh, selection on them. So. Me, yeah, I've kind of came in Peru five years ago to install this uh, big research station that we have here that's raising both butterflies and dart frogs. And uh, the goal of um, these um, what was really to understand which kind of natural selection was acting mm -hmm. on the color pattern wings of these butterflies. So by studying butterfly, we could also understand what's happening with the frogs or with some millipedes that we find here, other beetles that are warningly colored. Mm -hmm. And um, so I've started here and we did a lot of work uh, on the, the genomic. Mm -hmm. So lots of cross are used for genomics analysis, so understand color patterns. And we also collect a lot in the field to have natural sampling of this population of a butterfly, the frequency of the color pattern, because we can have one butterfly, as I said, with maybe 12 or 15 color patterns and want to understand why. And we did also lots of work with uh, sexual selection. So we want to know why do they prefer mate that looks similar to them or sometimes even different to them more. And all these, um, all, all these uh, aspects um, comes together to produce the diversity of color pattern and mm. forms that we see in butterflies. So we have a lot of species of butterfly here that we raise uh, from eggs to butterflies. Uh, some are completely colored, some are all transparent and we we study all these forms and function together uh, in an integrative project of diversity of the tropics. And um, I was going to ask you, uh, you said you have a number of species, approximately how many species do you have here? It's like a pretty large facility. So we, we work mostly with four species. Mm -hmm. So this is the main team, uh, four species that are highly diverse in color patterns. But we also um, have a lot of other projects on the side uh, with students coming uh, often on about 30 to 35 other species that we keep or raise here mm -hmm. uh, in, within this cage. Okay. 
So if you could just quickly uh, maybe give me an example of one of the species and yes, the... Yes, of course. But we could okay. enter like the greenhouse okay. here where we... Uh, uh, lots of different butterflies are found. And I can show you some quick and interesting... So the goal... Yes. Oops. I will. I'll be right there. He's just going over one quick thing about the butterflies. Oh, come on. Okay. So I'll show you why uh, this butterfly is really interesting. So first, we have an um, extremely large diversity of color pattern. So what I want to show you is um, what we call... So you remember, you might remember with the frogs, the Renitomea imitator mm -hmm. mimicry. Mm -hmm. But this butterfly, they do exactly the same thing. Okay. So for instance, um, I'll take one of the butterfly here. So we have this butterfly, which is called Heliconus pneumata terrapotensis. Well, he has a bit of broken wing because of the cages. We have another species here of Heliconus, which is a Pardalinus. And you can see it's exactly the same pattern. Mm. So the colors change a little bit, but not that much. But what's more interesting, so these two are Heliconus. And now we can go in a completely other uh, family of butterflies. And um, I'll try to find one for you. Here we go. So here we have something. So I, I will release this one. And here. So we could show it to you like these. So here you have two distinct, you can see by the head, completely different head, completely different family of butterflies, and yet the exact same color pattern. So this is Mullerian mimicry, the exact same thing you see with poison dart frogs is occurring mm. with butterflies, and only in this small region of Peru. Mm. And so I showed you these examples, but we also have all the other color pattern you can find in this cage, have other species mimicking them, and they're like completely indistinguishable. So when they fly, you cannot distinguish these two butterflies from each other. And the predator should not be able to distinguish them either. So this is a part of the work we, we've been conducting here. And we also work with, uh, I can show you this. So the, the, the challenge with butterflies and frogs, always catching them, right? Mm -hmm. So we also have a lot of work with this clear wing butterfly that they're part transparent you can see the, the color pattern they have here is pretty complex too mm -hmm. um, so another example of the, what I showed you of the mimicry are these two butterfly here one tiny Itamin butterfly with one big Heliconius pneumata butterfly. Come on, little guy. Like the small one is mimicking the big one, or vice versa, we don't really know, in fact, mm. the direction it goes. Mm. So this is most of the work we've been doing on these uh, butterflies here. So col the diversification of color pattern, but at the same time, the convergence why are they mimicking each other so I got a question for you if someone wanted to do a project here with you and to intern or to work as such how would they go about that uh, it's it's well possible they should just contact me that would be the best solution and we can plan a project uh, the, about the fundings uh, for most of the project we have fundings to uh, to cover about any expense in Peru from okay. lodging to food okay and after that uh, yeah we're always searching for really motivated people that are not scared of going into the jungle, catching frogs or butterflies, and yes, uh, yes. that's a really... Yeah. So, yeah, we try to, uh, Step to your right a little. Really Step to your right. We're just doing a, uh, a V-stock shot. Butterfly cages.